Our first case is an illustration of what happens to implants when they're not positioned deep enough into solid bone. But what happens to the bone around the teeth, to the bundle bone, is that it resorbs over time and then it looks as though the implant is positioned completely outside of bone. This morning's patient has had a number of implants already, so he's had an implant bridge uh, for a number of years. He's started to have some bone loss around those implants. So what we're going to do today is, uh, is really remove those implants and, uh, and do a little bit of a bone reduction and uh, give him an all on four restoration. He want, really wants to improve the aesthetics, which is not possible to do uh, when you have those individual implants and uh, there's already been some recession of the gum. What you see here is a classical example of uh, what happens to the bone as it resorbs. Now those implants, it is quite likely that they were placed within bone at the time that they were placed. But what happens to the bundle bone is that it resorbs over time. And as it resolves, you can see that the implant has become exposed. I'm going to keep one of those implants because it just gives you a bit of a guide on positioning the next one. It's always important to make up for that bone loss with some grafting. So it's very rare today that I would do an in, a single implant case without some form of grafting. You need to do an alveolectomy or an alveoplasty, whatever you might call it. Uh, to make sure that we're past the area of the uh, of, of most compromise, which is this area, the alveolar bone, and we're deeper into the basal bone, which is a lot less susceptible to resorption. So we've got just 18 millimeters to the incisal edge. It's actually 16 millimeters to the lower incisal edge, but the upper incisal edge is going to be at 18, right? So I'm going to use this implant as a guide. So what I'm doing here is just more trimming the palatal dense bone because this bone is very soft. Can I just um, loosen up this tooth, straighten up this tooth? So what I'm going to do now is just um, loosen up this tooth so it doesn't compromise the bone up of the implant in. I want to make sure the implant's stable. And sometimes wiggling the tooth about can actually cause reduce the stability of the implant so I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to loosen that tooth before I put the implant in. Yeah. That's good. had an eight millimeter five by eight over here um, and really needed a five uh, five by ten would have been better so sunk it a bit deeper and I'm going to use a 2.5 mil abutment here or else I'm going to use a 1.5 in here Can I get 3.5? That's 1.5 Yeah next 5 by 14 This is 14. Mm -hmm. So I'm just adding the bone into this defect here. Give me some into here. Yep. Mm -hmm. A bit more. Mm -hmm. okay. We have Maria here, she's inserted the upper bridge, the upper all in four uh, for our patient. So this is uh, pa the patient who we had the implants that we had to remove uh, because of all the problems that he's been having with uh, apart from the aesthetics but also the food getting caught. Now we have an upper all in four bridge. And, uh, and there's a very flat interface. It's gonna make it very simple to keep it clean. And uh, remember this patient's had his surgery uh, not so long ago, just a few hours ago, and budget is together. 
and uh, now he's got a uh, little bit of swelling which is absolutely normal but there's not too much swelling in the mouth and he's got a really nice bite how does it feel in your mouth good does it feel pretty strong yep and the bite seems pretty even for you or how does it feel i feel cantilever and even